YouTube, this is Charlie426, and today we finally have the review of the Premium Bandai exclusive HGUC Gundam Mudrock or Gundam Unit 6. Now, like the Gundam Pixie, the Gundam Mudrock was also one of those mobile suits that I really wanted to have as a model kit or as a Gunpla kit. And it's finally happened. The moment that I saw this get announced, I was really happy and I didn't even hesitate to pre-order it. I, I didn't even hesitate, I even bought two. As you can see, I pre-ordered two of them and I am very happy with that. Now, you might be wondering why I ordered two. Because those who know the Gundam Mudrock, it, will, it actually had two versions. Number one is the incomplete version, which is the one that you see with the white shoulders. Uh, and then the more just normal legs and then we have the co the actual completed version which has the blue shoulders and extra thrusters on the legs so yeah it's a minor it's a minor difference but definitely um, a difference in performance in the actual mobile suit but still uh, the fact that the gunpla kit actually considered that aspect was definitely a big game changer for me to buy two usually I would never buy two of the same kits unless it's something I really like that and then while building I broke it then I might buy a second one to replace the broken piece but this one I just went on and bought two and for the sake of reviewing the kit as well and as you can see on the back over there there's another mudrog over there that's not a kit that's actually the G-frame got the mudrog and um, I, I felt like that some people might you know wonder how it's bit really different from the from the kit so yeah okay so this might this is going to be like a two-part review or even a three-part review depending on how I go with this uh, because, as I mentioned, I bought two, but in terms of the equipment, I'll be only showing one set because they're pretty much the, the same thing, which, whichever version you make. But depending on what you build, the leftover pieces can be very different. So because of this aspect, I'm going to go with two, uh, two parts. So part one, uh, we'll go with the, obviously, the completed version. And then in part two, we'll go with the um, incompleted version. So in part one, the articulation will be will be talked about so uh, in part two the incompleted version um, I won't be talking about articulation so I'll be right back to prepare about part one okay now let's get started with part one so uh, in part one as I mentioned this is the completed form so let's talk about the what the components first of all so first of all what you get of course is obviously the Gundam Mudrog itself uh, and then hand wise you only get three hands two for uh, two two of them are the multi-purpose hands for left and right which is currently actually attached onto the kit as well the third hand is the actual trigger finger hand for the beam rifle so um, I just already attached it to the uh, beam rifle right away now um, for some reason this kit does not use the hole and peg system but still so hand wise it's a little bit wobbly but it, it holds on to the beam rifle very t uh, okay so there's no reason for the beam rifle to slip out. And I would like to mention the Gundam Underrocks beam rifle is one of the unique uh, beam rifles out there because I've never seen any other mobile suit that has the same beam rifle as this one. Um, definitely an interesting design. I'm going to assume that the, these blocks on the bottom are the like the energy caps or like basically like the magazines of the beam rifle. Um, so yeah. And GBO2, uh, or Gundam Battle Operations 2, um, it has the same design. Of course, I don't think the tip is white in the game. Uh, but the thing in that game is that while most beam rifles has a charge gimmick, this one does not have charge gimmick. So you can just, just constant fire. Yeah. Um, and then we have the shield. Pretty basic looking shield. Uh, a lot of, we have, we've seen these shields in other mobile suits as well. But pretty simple. The blue section is a color separated piece. And then while most, in my if my memory serves me correct, most of the time we would have a polycap inside here, but they just, but this time they did not use a polycap. It's just just pure plastic with a ball joint. So, yeah, we can just connect that as well. And yeah, it's a very basic shield. And then other than that, we get two beam saver effect parts. And obviously on the backpack or on the cannon, we have those beam saver hilts. Yep. Okay, and before we go into those uh, leftover pieces, uh, here we have some stickers. So number one, we have these typical stickers. So we have the two reds for the head and uh, for uh, the front and back head camera. We have the the V symbol for the crotch area. Once again, I would have preferred if this was color separated because some some kits do have actually color separated uh, V symbols in in the crotch area, but this one did not. And then this one was pretty interesting because for me, I always knew or had or ha always been aware that the Gundam Motorrock had red eyes, but they also gave, gave um, the green eye sticker option because I believe some versions, uh, I'm, 
I don't really remember that much, but some versions of the Mudrock uh, out there or the art drawings or maybe some other product that I'm not aware of have green eyes. Um, the biggest example would be that uh, this was actually a friend and I never actually, I couldn't remember, but according to my friend, he mentioned that the G-Frame also had green eyes, and which was pretty true. This is the G-Frame, which I actually had. I guess I was just not as satisfied with this version to the point where I, I remembered it, but still, this one actually has green eyes. Now, I'm not sure if it was in the PSP game, the Gundam Battle Universe. There's, there is a Gundam Murak, but I believe it doesn't sh start as uh, red eyes. I believe if you use its its ultimate ability, the red the eyes turn red or something, but I could be wrong with that. But either way, I've always knew that the Gundam Mudrock or I had red eyes, which is why I decided to go with red eyes. Okay, now let's talk about the leftover part. So if you build the oh and oh yeah, before that, and then here we have some sticker decals. Nothing too special. We have the number six for the unit six. We have three of them, one big one and two smaller ones, and then we have the Federation symbol, which I believe goes onto the shield. But yeah. I'm pretty sure you guys want to see like how it looks like without any decals for now. So if you decided to go with the complete version, meaning that you went with the blue shoulders and then with those extra um, thrusters on the legs, that very looks Alex-ish. But the thing is that these ones can actually move separately. Um, these are the parts that you should be left with. So number one is the incompleted shoulders. So these shoulders are very Gundam Alex-ish. I'm, I'm just going to say that. Because and and also this Gundam Mudrock kit actually shows some good signs or some uh, or evidence that or methods that they're going how to if they ever make a HUC Gundam Alex 2.0 or revive uh, this kit shows that on how they're going to do that. So here we have the shoulders, nothing too special. And then while the completed shoulders actually use polycaps inside there for the connection, these ones are actually uh, non polycap plastic for some reason. I'm not sure why they. Well, why that's the case but still it's good to know that if you even though you do buy one you can always replace uh, the shoulders with these so you would have to take off the arm take off the shoulder and then replace it with these ones so you plug the arm into this and then for leg wise here are the leftover parts because obviously if you don't if you don't build the incomplete version um, if you build the complete version um, you have to plug these in, which means that there's a hole there. But if you go with the incomplete version, and then if you leave it like this, that's going to be awkward. So, which is why they did consider on giving leftover pieces for covering that up without the any holes. And of course, um, all of these four look the same for left and right. But the actual way for the complete version on the inside, they have these extra uh, moldings as well. So yeah, um, once again, if you want to. Uh, if you only bought one and if you want to go back and forth between the two forms, I guess you can do that. Okay, so we've seen the leftover parts. Now let's go on with the articulation of this kit. I'll go with the G-Frame comparison later. So here we have the articulation. Oh, and of course, despite being premium Bandai, there's not... All, what you just saw was pretty much the le last of the leftover parts. There are no other leftover parts as well. Because obviously this one is one of those unique kits where it doesn't actually have a base, but yeah, you get my point. Like the Pale Rider. Of course the Pale Rider did have some leftover parts that they did, but it didn't use, but you get my point. Okay, so here we have the head. The head, obviously I went with the red eyes, the blue chins. Now this color uh, color separation is very well done. There's only, As I mentioned, there's not many stickers as well, so the head articulation can go down that much up that much and then the neck is actually a polycap joint and then 360 is no problem at all of course um the only part that was kind of tricky for me was while building the kit was attaching the v-fin because it was it had some one of those unique interesting connections for the v-fin but still it worked out pretty well okay and before we go to the uh, body let's look at the <coughs> sorry about that so let's look at the backpack the backpack pretty simple looking if you ask me for what it is we have four thrusters and then we have these connections which is connected to a peg so you can pretty much rotate the cannon of course i don't think it can go 360 because how the design is it's going to collide there so you can go back that much and then forward pretty well not exactly straight for 90 degrees but it's basically enough and if there's one part I would like to mention to be a little bit be careful of would be the beam savers. Now, I'm not talking about the beam savers itself is fragile. It's just the way how the connection. We have these small pegs actually. Um, we have these small pegs that plugs into the beam saver. So if you're not careful 
let's say if you're trying to pull it out and then you accidentally do this, you bent it, then you might break off that peg. So just be a little bit careful. And since I did pull this out, I'll just keep it out. So just be aware of that aspect because, you know, you don't want to break anything in your kit. Uh, okay, so now let's look at the main body. The main body has done been very well. Uh, and I think the color is is also pretty good because compared to the G-Frame, which was light blue, this one is like the the right amount of blue and dark blue as well. Uh, so uh, ab crunch, I don't think I don't think this should be considered as an ab crunch because there is no ab crunch. Of course, the white piece you see in the middle here, it, I believe that connects as a ball joint, uh, polycap ball joint to the top section, if I remember correctly. Um, yeah, uh, let's see. Uh, so, the body 360 twist is not possible because I believe the, it collides with the back skirt armor. Uh, so, yeah, not much for the body up section, but still, uh, all, all the yellow you see here are all color separated pieces. So, they did a pretty good job regarding that as well. And the arms, as you can see, are ball jointed arms, so, or shoulders. So, you can have the forward and backward movement, and if you can pull, and you can kind of pull out the polycap a little bit more than you think. And then the arms. Now we have these side guards on the arms. So if you don't, if you leave it like that, it can't really go to the side that much. But if you pull it outwards like that, and then you can go a little bit more. And the arm also has can go 360 on its own. And then you still have your typical 360 twist on the arm itself. But that's not the interesting part because that's pretty much common in these days. But what I would like to focus is the lower arm because, believe it or not. Um, for those who don't know, I like to call this the Alex Syndrome, because if you see the Gundam Alex or NT-1, uh, we always see the arms, because the Gatling guns are always, we see them presented to be on the side, but when you actually consider the human anatomy, um, the arms would be always showing, uh, the Gatling guns would be on the side, but in reality, if you compare that to the human, the arms are, the Gatling guns should be on the lower section. This goes the same for the Gundam Mudrock, so... Most of the time we see Gunpla kits like this, so we can bend it fully. So we still have a 90 degree, a double jointed bend. But to prevent the Alex Syndrome, this is what they did. They made a rotating point on the lower arm, so you can rotate only the lower arm and not the top section. And now finally have, or and properly pose with the arm, the, like the Gatling gun, or for the Gundam Mudrock, these are, I believe, have our grenade launchers. And, yeah. Well, we, we're not only limited to just doing this anymore, but we can also bend it a little bit more. Not exactly double jointed, but still uh, a 90 degree bend. And if we actually get a Alex Revive, this aspect is going to help us a lot when it comes to poses. But because back then, all we could do is just, just straight arm and then twist the entire arm and then pose. But now, that can be fixed. So that is very interesting. Of course, if there's one part, part I was hoping... Uh, to happen was that these parts would open, but sadly they don't. But oh well, can't have win them always. Okay, and your hands are typical ball jointed hands. Okay, and then once again the V, uh, the V symbol on the crotch is supposed to be a sticker, but I decided to use a gun, uh, gold gun the marker just to color that section. And the front skirts, uh, they can move forward. They they come in as a single piece, but you can separate them as well because they're the double ball joint connection. The side skirts can move okay, back skirt does not move at, as much, and then we have a nice size hole going on here. And we have a typical connector here, and we have an action base hole. And the legs can go 90 degrees to the side, and then forward 90 degrees, and then backwards not so much. And we have a nice double jointed bend, and we have your typical ball jointed feet, but somehow for this kit, uh, for this kit it's kind of stiff. I don't know why, but still it's stiff and yeah. and. I do like the ankle guards because this is one of those ankle guards that's not wobbly at all. And then we have the side thrusters on the side uh, on the side of the legs, and they can since they are on the peg, they can move like any way any way you want. Even 360 might be possible. Now uh, I believe I'm not sure if if other games did this because I don't I can't remember in Gundam Battle Universe, but in Gundam Battle Operations 2, which actually have the Mud Rock. Um, Despite how it looks, it doesn't really walk around. It actually like slides or glides around like how the Dom does. So, uh, which is why I think it's because of these things. Of course, I believe I'm gonna. I haven't played Gundam Gundam Battlefront, uh, so I'm gonna assume that the the incomplete version just walks around. All right. So we've seen the basic articulation. So now let's go on with the uh, comparison first, and then we'll go with the equipment. Okay. So we have. 
let's look at the basics. So this is the G-Frame. For those who still don't know the G-Frame, I'll leave a link in the description below on one uh, of some of the G-Frames I reviewed because these are basically figurines, but very simple figurines. Like it's like they, it's like they made a a very simple ver, uh, simple figurine version of a RG, something like that. But yeah, it's basically an okay product line. It's still coming out. So uh, obviously the size is going to be different. This, the scale obviously is different. I'm not sure what's what the exact scale is, please. So yeah, that's up to you to figure out. But um, so as you can see, the the blue color is very different. While the HGUC kit actually goes with a darker blue, the G frame uses a more light blue. And then I believe uh, design wise, they're pretty much almost the same. It's just that it's like minor detail changes. I believe the blue sections on the knee are more longer. the the yellow The yellow location is pretty much the same. I believe. Um, the sides, the side vents or side thrusters on the legs, they look pretty similar. It's just different size. Of course, this one does not move at all. Now, the only difference would be the cannons. Now, the cannons, as you can see, if you look at from here, the beam savers are on top of the cannons. While this one, the G-Frame, I'm not sure which version or design they went with, but um, you can see the beam savers are actually on the side. So that's actually one uh, di different aspect regarding that part. And obviously. Uh, the cannons are much shorter as well for the G-Frame and, and then the HGUC version seems to be a little bit longer. Okay, so we've seen that part, so now, now let's look at the equipment. So the equipment are very basic, uh, very simple. Uh, we have the beam rifle which can be attached right away uh, with, the, with the trigger finger and you have no problem even though the grenade launcher is on the side. Of course, if you want to, you could technically do this as well. Of course, the only problem is that the handle is a little bit too long, which collides with the grenade launcher. So um, it's going. It may be awkward to pose in within this position. So I think, uh, yeah, this is one. This might be a small issue, but not too, you know, major. So yeah, you can still pose pretty decent with this, uh, even though you have the grenade launcher on the side. And then same goes for the beam saber, uh, because if you try to hold the beam saber. Let me actually put it here. So let's say I have the grenade launcher on the lower section and then I put the beam saber in. You can see, once again, it's, it's colliding to the point where it's not going into uh, in, through the hand entirely. So once again, this is this might be one limitation, but I don't think it's a really big deal regarding it because now we can still bend the arm while it's still on the side. So this is a very big um, improvement. And yeah, it holds the beams here well, but once again, it's one of those wobble. It, it, it doesn't really fall off right away, but it's still wobbly because it's not exactly a perfect fit. So yeah, but still, it, it gets the job done. And then like the old HUC Alex, I believe the old HUC Alex uh, uses a clip clipping mechanism for the shield. This is no different. And also on the shield connector, you can you have two sections you can attach against attach it onto the side or on the back. So we have this clipping mechanism where we have these small hinges or holes on the grenade launcher. All you need to do is just pretty much clip it in and there you go, you have the connection. And yeah, that's pretty much it. So part one, that was pretty much it for the uh, completed version. So on part two, I'll be right back with the incompleted version and show you guys what exactly the difference is between the complete and incomplete version.